The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide. Hello and welcome to Justice. I'm Judge Janine Pirro. Thanks for being with us tonight. There is a sacred trust between a country and its leader, between a president and the people he leads. When a leader violates that trust, the people from whom he derives his power have the inalienable right to remove him. You may agree or disagree with what I'm about to say. It's not meant to be political. Whatever the context, when you let things slide one after another, the foundation deteriorates. Even water sliding down a rock begins to wear at it and break it down. And like that rock, our very existence is in jeopardy. Barack Obama has put us in that jeopardy yet again. The latest exchanging a man whose own platoon soldiers call a deserter who voluntarily left his unit during combat in itself a death eligible crime for five of the worst Taliban terrorists in Gitmo. Obama sends out old faithful Susan Rice to say this of Bo Bergdahl. He served the United States with honor and distinction. Really? Even the White House had to respin that. Now, Susan, isn't English your first language? Weren't you briefed on what to say? And not for nothing, don't you know that those Sunday morning talk shows are a danger zone for you? But then again, that despicable video lie got you moved up to National Security Advisor. And ironically, the reason for the trade? What we did was ensure that, as always, the United States doesn't leave a man or a woman on the battlefield. Pray tell, Susan, is it okay to leave some behind? The trade surprised even Congress. It comes with some surprise and dismay that the transfers went ahead with no consultation, totally not following the law. And that's a Democrat. Enter our president. We had a prisoner of war uh, whose health had deteriorated. And we were deeply concerned about it. And we saw an opportunity and we seized it. And I make no apologies for that. But when key senators didn't buy the ill excuse, a new narrative emerged. The Taliban would kill Bergdahl if you followed U.S. law and told Congress. Seriously? Mr. President, my sources tell me that you knew Bergdahl's location for months. Why didn't you send in SEAL Team 6? It would have made another great photo op. Why didn't you send in those drones? Could it be, Mr. President, he was your excuse to release five Taliban terrorists from Gitmo? Those five men, the worst of the worst. Some wanted by the UN for mass murders, killing thousands, Al Qaeda connected. These are the guys who behead their enemies, including children. They hate America and everything we stand for. And you release them, knowing many return to the battlefield because Arab country Qatar assured you that they do not pose a threat to us? And you're good with that? You buy it? You think 12 years in Gitmo has softened their resolve to kill us? Mr. President, you didn't just release them. You unleashed them. And you, and you alone, will be responsible for the hell that will be unleashed on us. You have teed us up for death and destruction. And don't give me this hogwash that they're prisoners of war who have to be freed when we leave Afghanistan. They are not prisoners of war. The Taliban is not a country. They are enemy combatants who can be held indefinitely and should have been tried for their crimes. And as much as you want to take terms like Islamic extremist and jihad out of our lexicon, the war on terror is far from over. You didn't have to release them. And I don't give a damn whether you try them at Gitmo, in a military tribunal, or in a federal court. 
United States attorneys have prosecuted these dirtbags and convicted them time and again. Here's the bottom line. You negotiated with terrorists. You broke the very law that you signed. You have shown terrorists that they can win concessions by kidnapping Americans. In the history of this country, we have never traded mass murderers for a deserter. My father and grandfather fought in World War II. Ironically, you go to Normandy 70 years later, where my grandfather was injured, and make like you respect the military. You call yourself a commander-in-chief. But what commander-in-chief doesn't support a surge but sends in 40,000 troops anyway? What commander-in-chief reduces benefits to those in the military, closes the Veterans War Memorial, reduces the Army to pre-World War II levels, knowingly allows veterans to die in our hospitals while replenishing the enemy in a time of war? Mr. President, you are destroying this country. You have diminished us on the world stage. You have trampled on the very laws that you swore to uphold. You are not a true commander in chief. We've impeached a president for lying about sex with an intern. Your actions, far more egregious, demand impeachment. The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide.